Andrew Pallotta, New York SUT, Ex Executive Vice President, uh, Barbara Bowen, President of Professional Staff Congress, and Jamie Danzler, Vice President, I think that's what it is. Yeah. <coughs> and Daniel Five. Senator you Young, know, Assemblyman Farrell. You know, this stick ends up in the records, and you should talk to the smallest part of it. Oh, yes. And you, you've been here so much, you know the long part. You will get the abbreviated version. Thank you very my, much. That's my I'm solemn sure. I know you knew. Okay, so thank you again for having us here today and the opportunity to testify. I sit here today with Dr. Jamie Dangler from UUP and President Barbara Bowen from PSC also. Uh, Vice President Mike Fabricant from PSC and Chris Black, the Director of Legislation for NYSET. Um, you have my written testimony. I'll give you a quick summary. Um, there is no denying the fact that in order to be career ready today, we have to be um, educated and well educated, and kids need a good college education for that. It's abundantly clear from what we've heard today throughout the many hours of testimony that each and every one of the families in New York State needs the state university and the city university system, and that for most families, this is the only affordable option that they have. Therefore, as a state, we have a moral obligation and an economic incentive to ensure that as many of our residents are afforded an opportunity to go to college, and it requires a real financial investment into SUNY and CUNY. The executive budget provides flat funding for core instruction to both um, CUNY and, and, and I will also talk about, and um, Dr. Bowen will also talk about the situation with CUNY. With um, in respect to CUNY, the executive budget proposes a shift, that's one way of putting it, of 30% of operating costs to New York City. I want to make three points with respect to funding for SUNY and CUNY four-year campuses. SUNY and CUNY need a significant increase in funding this year to enable them to fully carry out their public mission in educating our students and our future. Number two, providing the funding is the state's responsibility. And number three, a big part of that responsibility is that the state pays its fair share in operating costs and expenses. To ensure this, we urge that a real maintenance of effort be enacted in this year's budget. I want to thank all of you for passing the MOE for SUNY and CUNY last year, and I especially want to thank Assemblymember Glick and also um, Senator Laval for sponsoring the bill and all the work that they did and the continued advocacy that we saw today at the press conference. While last year's MOE was vetoed, the governor indicated in his veto message that it should be dealt with in the context of this year's budget. The time is now and we hope that you can work this through with the governor to address this important issue in this year's budget. With respect to our community colleges, I want to thank the members of the Assembly and the Senate for all the work that you did in supporting these um, campuses last year, and thank you for the school aid increase that was provided. Obviously, you know the importance of these campuses to our state's higher public education systems. Over one million degrees have been awarded from community colleges in this state. This year, the executive budget proposes flat funding for community colleges. I can draw your attention to the charts on page seven, which shows that um, both SUNY and CUNY community college students are paying the lion's share of operating costs in these campuses. In fact, from 2005 to six to 2015 to 16, SUNY community college students went from paying 39% to 43%. And at the same time, the state's contribution for these costs went from 29% to 26%, with the local sponsor share remaining fairly um, the same. There's also a similar situation for CUNY. The student share went from about 37% to almost 42%, while the state share went from 31 to 26%. And again, the local share remains relatively constant at about 32%. 
Notwithstanding your efforts over the past few years, we are still below the 2008-2009 state funding levels, and we request that you increase this to $250 per FTE student in Base A this year, and that the state develop a multi-year plan to honor the statutory requirement and commitment to fund 40%. This is the year that we say that the state has the resources available to do this. On performance-based funding, the executive budget again provides $30 million for performance-based funding, $18 million for SUNY, and $12 million for CUNY. Performance-based funding is not a new idea and it does not address the SUNY or CUNY funding problems. Other states have tried this and had little success. In fact, results on this are, show that it is ineffective at best. We also disagree with SUNY's initiative to create a $100 million performance-based funding program. The vast majority of the funding for this comes from the SUNY system programs and campus funds. NYSET urges the legislature to reallocate the $30 million for a full-time faculty in initiative to enhance quality and provide students with the advisement and counseling they most desperately need. Full-time faculty endowment. Speaking of this, we must be able to create a state endowment, which we've talked about for the last couple of years, and be able to fund this on <laughs> SUNY hospitals with respect to um, what we have been up against for the past couple of years. I want to thank you for coming to their rescue last year again and um, providing the funding that was needed. Unfortunately, the state budget this year um, cuts the SUNY hospitals by $19 million, the same exact restoration that you made last year. So we ask that you restore this funding and increase funding to the 2011 level of, 200, of $128 million. <coughs> Dr. Dangler will also speak about the SUNY downstate situation in a moment. NYSET urges the legislature to continue to invest in the student opportunity programs that provide greater access and remediation. We've heard much about this today and the support that this has. <coughs> we support updating TAP program making it more workable for today's students and also passing of the DREAM Act. In conclusion, I want to point out that the final level of funding for public higher education in this year's enacted budget all depends upon a higher education table target. In recent years, the table target amount for higher ed has not afforded you the opportunity to fund SUNY and CUNY at the level these institutions deserve. This year presents a real opportunity to change the funding situation at these campuses. NYSET urges you to set a higher table target that will enable you to make a real and meaningful investment in public higher education. Thank you again for all of the work that you've done, and I now turn it over to Dr. Dangler from UUP. Thank you, Andy. Chairwoman Young, Chairman Farrell, distinguished members of the Senate Finance, and Assembly Ways and Means Committee, thank you for providing United University Professions with the opportunity to testify today. My name is Jamie Dangler, and I'm UUP's Vice President for Academics. I'm here today on behalf of UUP President Fred Kowal, who could not join us. UUP represents more than 35,000 academic and professional faculty and staff at SUNY State-operated academic institutions, health science centers, and teaching hospitals. First. Uh, I'd like to echo Andy's thanks for your strong bipartisan support for a policy that commits to fully funding base budget needs for our public universities, including our teaching hospitals, and we are especially grateful to the leadership of Higher Ed Committee uh, Chair Assemblymember Glick and Senator Laval. We hope, as Andy stated, that a maintenance of effort can be negotiated as part of the coming budget. We also, support your we also appreciate your steadfast support for SUNY's highly successful opportunity programs, EOP and the EOCs, and we urge you to expand their funding by adding $15 million. UUP also proposes $47.3 million in additional base funding for SUNY state-operated campuses to cover collective bargaining obligations, repayment of deficit reduction monies withheld from employee paychecks over a two-year period, and contractual salary increases for 2016 and 17. 
an additional $8.2 million is necessary to cover mandatory costs for utilities and building maintenance. We heard this morning that SUNY has requested a higher maintenance of effort figure, and um, that is probably because they added the cost of implementing their new minimum wage provision, which we did not add into our proposal. We ask that you restore the SUNY hospital subsidy to its 2010 level of $128 million, and support, and we support SUNY's budget request to forgive $40 million in debt service. As you know, the three teaching hospitals, Upstate, Downstate, and Stony Brook, are economic engines in their communi communities. They provide essential health care services, especially to low-income and underserved uh, residents. They supply the current and future workforce for this critical industry. In addition, SUNY's four academic medical centers generate approximately $700 million of the state's $2 billion in federal graduate medical education funding, and that represents 10% of the entire federal allocation. We thank you, as Andy has said, for protecting downstate's public mission from misguided privatization schemes. We continue to advocate for a Brooklyn health care plan that would dedicate a portion of the $1.2 billion health care refinancing program to develop four SUNY Downstate owned and operated ambulatory care centers. This would support medical education and the provision of vital health care to thousands of underserved and underinsured patients in the Brooklyn area in collaboration with other Brooklyn safety net hospitals, our plan calls for comprehensive ambulatory care throughout the borough. We also urge you to create a public higher education quality endowment initiative to rebuild academic departments depleted by historic underfunding and to transition highly qualified part-time faculty and staff to full-time position. Currently, more than 6,000 faculty are part-time teaching faculty at SUNY's state-operated campuses, and more than 4,000 are full-time faculty who are not on the tenure track. This, uh, a little while ago, we heard SUNY report that more than 900 new faculty were hired since 2011, but the part-time, full-time ratio has not changed much, if at all, since then. Currently, 22% of SUNY's faculty are um, full-time but not eligible for tenure. Therefore, they are not doing the full uh, complement of research service teaching work, accreditation work, et cetera, that is required at our institutions. And 34% are part-time adjuncts, so this significant portion. It's also not clear to us how many of the new hires are research faculty as opposed to teaching faculty. So the question of services to our students uh, are certainly very significant. The executive budget continues to set aside 18 million of state operating aid for performance-based funding, which would continue this year's level. But what the executive budget does not acknowledge is that in addition to the original 18 million, SUNY diverted an additional 82 million from other funding sources to support performance-based funding this year. Performance-based funding is a market-based accountability scheme that serves to further avoid adequately funding public higher ed, and there's a disconnect between New York State's chronic underfunding of our public education system and its expectations of high performance. Performance-based funding is not the way to undo years of disinvestment that continues to undermine the ability of SUNY campuses to achieve the very goals that performance-based funding uh, aims to achieve. Um, in addition, public medical education, as you know, is so critical for our state, and SUNY's, SUNY Buffalo's Health Science Center has the difficult challenge of providing high-quality medical training for its residents without having its own clinical hospital. UUP is proposing a brand new program, the Buffalo Healthcare Teaching Fellows Program, that would provide the focused and time-intensive teaching and guidance that residents need in order to receive the breadth and depth of experience that residencies should provide. And it also provides accountability uh, needed to ensure high-quality medical education. Now, a, a while ago, you heard the Chancellor, the SUNY Chancellor, say that SUNY's Teach New York Advisory Council's recommendations would address the immediate teacher certification problems that um, an assembly member asked her to address. 
But that group has not been focused on the pressing crisis we are currently facing. While enrollments in our state's P to 12 schools are actually increasing, especially in high needs in diverse urban and suburban areas, there are multiple indicators that teacher shortages are worsening with particular implications for the creation of a diverse teaching force. Enrollments in the state's teacher education programs at public and private institutions is plummeting. It's down, it was down 40% between 2008 and 2013, and we've certainly seen dramatic decreases at SUNY's uh, 17 campuses that have teacher education programs, including Fredonia and, and many others. The misguided implementation in 2014 of inappropriate and costly high-stakes certification requirements, combined with punitive and unfair teacher evaluations and receivership mandates, is discouraging young adults from pursuing teaching careers and creating barriers for adult learners to enter the field. To meet the challenge, UUP proposes that the state provide $15 million to support a new SUNY Recruiting and Educating Teachers for All program, modeled after the highly successful EOP program. This would help address the worsening crisis of recruiting and retaining teachers in high needs districts, and it would increase the participation rate of underrepresented and economically disadvantaged individuals in teaching careers, which is sorely needed. We also call for the state to stop outsourcing the quality control and accountability for teacher education tests, for certification tests, to for-profit vendors. The state currently, without cost, can contract with educational vendors to develop and administer tests. The vendor profits directly from students who pay to take and retake tests. The vendor is paid regardless of whether the tests are accurate, valid, or fair. And they actually profit from faulty exams that students may have to take and retake. This is currently the situation with all four of the state's teacher certification yep. exams and assessments. All are administered by Pearson. Students are paying up to $1,000 to take and retake faulty exams. We propose that, that SED take back responsibility for exam administration and fee collection. We also propose that there be an immediate and thorough evaluation of the new certification package, since there are so many problems, content problems, computer test format problems, and the EdTPA, which is really taking over the student teaching experience, is not working well in many specialty areas. Finally, uh, we urge you to reject the executive budget proposals to reduce the state's support for its retirees. That is, please reject tiering of state contributions to retiree health insurance premiums based on years of service, capping the state's reimbursement of Medicare Part B premiums, and ending state reimbursement of increased Medicare Part B costs for higher, increased, higher income retirees under IRMA. We also urge you to support the maintenance of a strong economic foundation for a high quality and productive life for the state's retirees by raising the maximum earning allowance from 30,000 to 35,000. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Dr. Bowen. Is it, uh, great. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, um, Chairs. Uh, thank you, Chairpersons Young and Farrell, and also Chairperson Laval uh, is not here, but Chairperson Glick is here, ably representing the higher ed wing. And uh, thank you, members. I especially want to thank you for staying through this long day and for continuing to ask such powerful questions. I'm very proud to be joined by Dr. Mike Fabricant, who is a professor at CUNY, and also by my colleagues here from NYSET and UUP. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, on behalf of the 27,000 members of the Professional Staff Congress CUNY. We've heard a lot about CUNY today, and I hope to be able to answer some of the questions that came up and didn't seem to be fully answered earlier. I want first to thank you, legislators, for the exceptional work you did in the last round of budget negotiations, um, especially for your work that others have mentioned on the uh, gaining the near unanimous support for the maintenance of effort bill, uh, 
uh, which was sponsored by Chairpersons Glick and Laval. Uh, you really did a splendid job on that, and we are hoping, with your support and your help, to have a structure maintaining effort, which is really just maintaining the commitment uh, to have that built into the budget in future years. I have a, a longer testimony. I'm not going to um, read it all. There are many other things to thank you for, and there are many points that uh, we want to make. Some you've heard um, by my colleagues already. But I want to concentrate on two things. I really have two messages. One is that the $240 million that was line-itemed by the governor for the first time with the specific narrative uh, of being used for retroactive raises for fair and affordable contracts for the CUNY employees, that that item must stay in the budget. And in fact, if it is to cover the need for retroactive raises to keep us merely on a par with other public employees, that amount, in fact, even needs to be raised because time has progressed since we first named that. There's another year of retroactive money needed, and the governor makes it clear that that amount is for the unions, plural, um, not just for our union. So I want to start by saying that that uh, item, whatever other negotiations you um, undertake and however you are able to finish the negotiating. I certainly support um, Vice President Pallada's very strong, very strong call to increase the table target. But one thing, uh, we rarely get a line item for 240 million. The governor recognizes the need to settle those contracts. Many of you have asked today, would that settle the contract? No, that amount isn't sufficient, but it would go a long way toward making that possible. And we certainly can talk about that in more detail. Um, so that's the first thing that I would like to make sure remains. Second, and a, a larger issue, is that the uh, sweeping and unprecedented so-called cost-sharing proposal by the governor to, quote, require New York City to cover $485 million of the, that's about a third, almost a third of the state contribution to the uh, senior colleges at CUNY that that proposal must not stand, and also that it can mask the real issue that I think should be before us. And the real issue is that under Governor Cuomo, there has been a steady decrease in the state's contribution to CUNY. So while many of us are talking about this unique and troubling proposal for so-called cost sharing, which if it were truly a cut, I'll answer, I know the chancellor earlier didn't answer maybe as, you know, I will say more um, <laughs> boldly than that. It would be absolutely devastating if that were applied as a cut. But I don't want us to focus so much on the um, politics and the complexity of that proposal that we miss something very, very important, which is that under Governor Cuomo, the contribution to CUNY from state funding has, in fact, decreased. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, our new analysis, uh, which again is given in more detail and with a graph in the um, supporting material, our new analysis shows that Governor Cuomo's budgets have led to a 3% decline in state funding for CUNY's four-year colleges. Um, that's between the beginning of Governor Cuomo's period in office until 2015-16. Um, the governor's press statements and his budget books proclaim big aggregate investment increases. They cite increases in nominal dollars. But once you factor in rising enrollment and you factor in inflation, you will see that the funds for CUNY for the four-year colleges have actually been cut during the governor's term of office. The truth is that after five years of tuition increases, five years of SUNY 2020, Governor Cuomo's signature public higher education policy, the result is that the state's investment in each CUNY senior college student is in real dollars less than it was before the governor took office. And really that's the only way to measure uh, investment. You can't leave out the fact that enrollment has grown by 20% in some areas. You can't leave out inflation. If you just look at the nominal dollars, you might see an increase. But when we look at where the money counts, which is how much is spent on each student, how much does New York State believe in investing in each student, you will see a drop in investment. 
Since the 2008 recession, which is a benchmark for many of the things that the legislature is rightly committed to restoring, since the 2008 recession, per FTE state funding for CUNY senior colleges has decreased by a full 17%. So we are down 3% during the governor's term and still 17% be behind where the state was at the recession, uh, pre-recession. Um, and that again includes an adjustment for inflation. The state's economy and budget have rebounded dramatically since the recession, but CUNY has been largely ignored until this year when the news was not good. In fact, an analysis by New York City controller Scott Stringer that he recently delivered when he testified revealed that if the state contributions to CUNY had grown at the same rate as the state's operating budget over the last seven years, the system would have received an additional $637 million. So as the budget grew in the state, the proportion of the budget that was dedicated to CUNY senior colleges has actually shrunk. It has not kept up. It's a fairly small proportion, but it has not kept up. So that's why our proposal today will sound a little different. And here we do support absolutely what the chancellor said. The real issue is that there should be more investment in CUNY. I know many of us are preoccupied with how there's, uh, how are we going to get out from under the proposal of cost sharing, $485 million, um, and how we must, absolutely must, hold on to the $240 million initiative by the governor to settle these contracts. But I also want to call your attention to the fact that what is really needed if New York State wants to make a serious investment in the students who attend CUNY is the beginning of a recovery from that loss of money that has occurred during Governor Cuomo's term of office. I was reminded in thinking about this of Cornel West, the philosopher Cornel West, who asked, who was um, asked a question in response to another budgetary decision. He asked legislators, just what kind of culture do you really want? And I would ask New York State, just what kind of university do you really want? If New York wants anything other than a university that is constrained to offer students less than the education they deserve, then it's time for a change in budgetary policy. And I think we should look at who attends CUNY. This has been mentioned earlier. Uh, the students at CUNY are 75, the undergraduates are 75% people of color, uh, Latino, black, and Asian. More than half of our students have incomes under $30,000 a year for the family. 40% are new immigrants, more than 40% work. This is a population that has been radically underserved by much of the rest of the culture and society and economy. CUNY does something astonishing with these students, not for, but with these students, and that's what's at risk through the steady, steady drip, drip, drip of underfunding. So that's why our proposal to you is not only uh, these two things, right? One is to hold on very tight to the fact that the governor acknowledged there needs to be money for retroactive pay if our contracts are going to be settled. And two is to look beyond the false diversionary narrative about cost sharing to the city and look at what's really happening to state funding, which is that it has diminished under Governor Cuomo. That is ironic to say the least, uh, because we have a surplus in the state, and also because the governor has uh, made as his hallmark, really, trying to address inequality. He has named that as something that's essential to him. He has named progressive values as essential, and he has named economic development as essential. No institution does more for economic development than the City University of New York. Of course, I'm joined by SUNY, and I feel very strongly that SUNY also plays a central role there, but I'm focus just for a moment on the city. I mean, higher education plays that central role. And for our governor to stand for progressive values and not see the importance of investing in CUNY, a central historical progressive institution, I think is short-sighted. And we're calling on you to make sure that does not stand in the final budget. I want to say one thing about the uh, history that leads to this idea of um, cost sharing, just to say a couple of things um, and then uh, quickly wrap up. Um, it's pure revisionist history that it's time for the city to take over a share of the cost for the four-year colleges of CUNY. The four-year colleges of CUNY are funded on exactly the same basis as the four-year colleges of SUNY. 
in terms of state funding. The community colleges of CUNY are funded on the same basis as the community colleges of SUNY. Moreover, the idea that this um, shift in responsibility took place just at the fiscal crisis is not correct. Um, it was really under Governor Rockefeller, who um, is such a um, supporter and, and expander of the state university, Governor Rockefeller, seeing the increase in enrollments after the GI Bill, invested very strongly in both the state and the city university, and invested in the city university so that the state, by 1974, before the fiscal crisis move, the state was already covering 45% of the costs of the CUNY four-year colleges. And in fact, it's the norm elsewhere across the country for four-year colleges to be the responsibility uh, for funding by the states, not the localities. So let me just say in closing that uh, yes, in answer to uh, Senator Stavisky's question, does the lack of a contract hurt recruitment? Absolutely. I can tell you right now about department chairs who say they cannot recruit the faculty and staff they need because of the lack of a raise. Um, and we ask you to look at the other proposals we've made throughout our testimony. We join our colleagues in calling for uh, an increase of $250 in the FTE funding for the community colleges. We strongly support a maintenance of effort um, renewal, and we do not believe tuition increases are the way to fund CUNY. That's not a stable basis. It's strategically not the right way to fund CUNY. So I'll just end um, by saying uh, we urge you to look at our testimony and to say that CUNY needs more state funding, not less. CUNY's half million students deserve a strong, well-funded university. Anything short of a renewal of investment represents a political decision to make sure that our students fail. I know that's not the decision you want to make, so I ask you to join us in finding an alternative course and funding CUNY. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deborah Lick.